Hey y'all, got another prayer request. Be sure and see the video before this one where I've got a prayer request in it. And this one made a comment to that one asking for prayer requests. The person's name is Anson, A-N-S-O-N, and I don't know if that's a man or a woman, but they are all alone in this world, no family, and I can certainly relate to that but they are afraid to go outside and that could be a problem. And, you know, I, I don't have any kind of fear myself and I'm certainly not afraid to go outside. So let's, as brothers and sisters of this person, let's lift them up because that, that would be a horrible situation to be in. I, I can't imagine being having that much fear that they don't want to go outside uh i don't exactly live in the safest neighborhood where i'm at now there's meth heads and crack heads all around me and uh it's not a safe place plus just about everybody in this town hates me because <laughs> they don't like me sharing jesus evidently it's a small town small country town and I'm an outsider here. So I know I'm not liked. You know, they make it very clear to me that I am not welcome here, except for a few people. There's a few that are very nice. They, matter of fact, a couple came and picked me up a while ago and took me to the grocery store because I physically cannot get my truck out and drive myself to the grocery store right now. And we've got a blizzard, a major blizzard coming early in the morning before sun up and I just wanted to be sure I had enough food on hand that didn't have to be cooked because they are expecting power to be out for a while. Uh, I've got a gas stove but it's got electric igniters on it and I was told by the salesperson at the store where I bought it that you could use a lighter or match and light it, but I've been told by other people that have new stoves that you can't, So, and I've never tried it, so I don't know. Uh, so I don't know if my stove will work with the electricity off or not, but uh, I've got enough food to eat now that doesn't have to be uh, cooked. Got a lot of fruits and vegetables and you know, even even if electricity goes off, my fridge is going to stay cold for a long time. And if it starts getting warm, there's going to be <laughs> waist deep snow. And they said that the the wind from the blizzard is going to blow it up as high as the eaves of the roof. So there's going to be plenty of places for me to keep stuff cold. Just not might not be a place for me to cook it at, but. I got that problem taken care of. But y'all, uh, let's pray for Anson. You know, it would be pitiful to be stuck inside your own house too afraid to go outside and not to have any family anywhere in the world to call. I, I can relate to that part of it. I can't relate to being that afraid though. So let's pray for that person. And if you see their comment, their comment was made at the previous video I made earlier today. Just leave them a comment to, to them, telling them you're praying for them. I, I just, that bothers me that somebody is that afraid. You know, I don't know if it's the neighborhood they live in or what, but uh, let's pray for that person. Now, what I've got for you is on a computer over here. It's something from Spurgeon that popped up today. It is excellent, y'all. It is one of his better ones, and it, Spurgeon doesn't have anything that's bad. But let me pull the computer a little closer to me here. and I'm just going to read it to you from the computer. The scripture reference he used is Philippians 1, 
21. For me to live is Christ. And then what Spurgeon wrote, he said, true. No, it says, I'm sorry, let me start over. What Spurgeon wrote is, the believer did not always live to Christ. You know that's true. I know that's true. I did not live for Christ for 51 years of my life. He began to do so when God, the Holy Spirit, convinced him of sin. And if you remember my testimony, it was the Holy Spirit that got a hold of me when I was paralyzed from the waist down. Not able to run from God anymore. Captured in bed, which was pretty much the only place I could go. He worked me up one side and down the other and spit out the bones. He convinced me of my sin. <laughs> and he did a whole lot more than that. He kind of whipped me up too. And when by grace he was brought to see the dying Savior making a portion, making a propitiation for his guilt, from the moment of the new and celestial birth, the man begins to live to Christ. And that was sure enough the case in my situation. I, I was paralyzed from the waist down. I couldn't do anything until I was able to walk again and drive again, and that took me a while. They said I'd never walk again, and I can walk. I, I don't walk good. I use a walker a lot. I use a, a four-footed walking cane a lot. This thing right here. And I'm sitting on a walker now. I sit on a walker just about all the time. See, it's on... Well, it's a rollator. It's a walker with wheels and has the seat that you sit on. It's just about the most comfortable chair i got. But I can walk without the cane or the walker, too. Just not very far and not on very rough terrain. But as soon as I could drive again, I bought a new truck, a big one. And I started my prison ministry. So it didn't take long for me to start living to Christ. And then Spurgeon says, Jesus is to believers the one pearl of great price for whom we are willing to part with all that we have. He has so completely won our love that it beats alone for him to his glory we would live and in defense of his gospel, we would die. He is the pattern of our life and the model after which we would sculpture our character. And I can say amen to that too, because my character changed. I was a good person. I was a very successful man. But My character wasn't all that good. I, everybody, you know, I had women everywhere I went. I had women. And everybody thought it's funny. But I wonder deep down what they thought. I don't know. They were always nice to me. You know, I was making a lot of money for the company, and so they didn't say anything bad about it. He has so completely won our love that it beats alone for him. To his glory we would live, and in defense of his gospel we would die. He is the pattern of our life and the model after which we would sculpture our 
character. And that's what I do now. It took me a while to get to that point, but I am there now. Paul's words mean more than most men think. And Paul's words again was for me to live as Christ. They imply that the aim and end of his life was Christ, nay, his life itself was Jesus. In other words, in the words of an ancient saint, he did eat and drink and sleep eternal life. That's pretty much what I do now. And I think probably any true Christian who's going to tell you the truth would say that also. Jesus was his very breath, the soul of his soul, the heart of his heart, the life of his life. Can you say as a professing Christian that you live up to this idea? Can you honestly say that for you to live is Christ? Your business, are you doing it for Christ? Is it not done for self-aggrandizement and for family advantage? Do you ask, is that a main reason? For the Christian, it is. He professes to live for Christ. How can he live for another object without committing a spiritual adultery? Many there are who carry out this principle in some measure, but who is there that dare say that he hath lived wholly for Christ as the apostle did? Yet, this alone is the true life of a Christian, its source, its sustenance, its fashion, its end, all gathered up in one word, Christ Jesus. Lord, accept me. I here present myself praying to live only in thee and to thee. Let me be as a bullock which stands between the plow and the altar to work or to be sacrificed and let my motto be ready for either. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. That's some good stuff, y'all. I think I'll print it and post it over at my community page here at YouTube so y'all can go over there and read it. That way you don't have to keep looking at my ugly face and hearing my voice. You can just go over there and read it for yourself as often as you want to. It's good. That's how we all should feel, and that's pretty much how I feel. That's pretty much my life. He, he took over. I wasted 51 years of my life, and he took over. I belong to him now. I hope you do too. And pray for Anson. And pray for Steve and Marilyn that I talked about in my previous video. And their son. And there's a million other people that needs prayer too, y'all. Pray for the lost. The lost has the biggest need of all. That's what burdens my heart. The number of people that we see every day that will be in hell before long if we don't do something about it. Does that not bother you when you walk through a grocery store or anywhere else? It bothers me. I look at each person as a person that's going to soon be in either heaven or hell. And I don't claim to have everything right, but 
I think feeling that way, looking at people in that respect is a good way to look at people. Hopefully it will prompt some of y'all to go up and ask them, do they know Jesus? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I still got to come back and do my daily Bible reading with you too. So y'all are getting all kind of bonuses today. God is good. It's all from him. If he didn't give it to me, I wouldn't share it. Y'all, the world needs Jesus more than it needs anything else. Share him. I do. I'm sharing with you right now. Let me tell you another story. One of my viewers made a comment. I don't remember if it's last night or this morning at one of my videos that he was addicted to porn, pornography. Asked me if he was going to hell. I told him I don't know the condition of anybody's soul except my own. But If he was as deep into pornography as he said he was, he most likely is not going to be headed to heaven. I guess it was yesterday that he and I had our conversation. I told him he doesn't want to go to hell, but he doesn't want to give up his pornography either. I thank God that pornography is something I never got into. I've never looked at porn, not one time. I've committed adultery hundreds or thousands of times, thousands of times with hundreds of different women. But I never got into pornography, and I thank God for that. And I thank God that he forgave me, forgave me, for all the adulterous affairs I've had. But y'all, when God saved me, he made me into a new man. It was hard to give up women. I didn't have to go looking for them. They'd come to me. I never could figure that out. This young man, oh, I don't know if he's a young or old man. I just assume he's a young man, but who, however old he is, he wrote me back this morning or this afternoon, I guess it was, said that he went to church today. He, he told me something about what his pastor told him. I don't remember what he said there, but he said that he went to his room to look at his pornography, but did it. So I hope that guy has woke up and that his heart has been changed. The fear of the Lord is something we all need to have. You know, I've got such a fear of the Lord now. If I went out and had sex with a woman right now, I would fully expect God to strike me dead right there on the spot. I won't do it because I promised him I wouldn't. But if I did, it would not surprise me at all if God struck me dead right there on the spot. That's what I would deserve. Whatever your hang-ups are, whatever your sins are, whether they be secret or open, 
I didn't hide mine. Everybody knew. Whatever they are, you need to give them up. One itsy bitsy teeny weeny little sin can put you in hell for all eternity. And you do not want that. There's no sin. I don't care how sweet it may look. There's no sin worth your soul. So whatever it is, give it up. Live for Jesus. The enjoyment of your sin isn't going to last past your last breath. What happens past your last breath is what you better be concerned about and not how much you're going to enjoy that sin just one more time. Jesus takes sin very, very seriously. Look at the cross if you don't believe me. If after he did that for us at the cross and you sin again, he has every right to zap your butt and throw you into hell for all eternity. And don't be surprised if he did after this warning. So turn away from your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put all your faith and trust in him. Start living your new life in Christ today. Jesus did everything that we that was necessary for us to be saved. There's no works on your part or my part. Salvation is not by works. It's by faith and what Jesus did. You believe what Jesus did and you can be saved. Repent of your sins, turn away from them, leave them. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I've got the scriptures that I've been referring to and quoting listed in the description box below the title of this video. Read them. I love y'all. I am concerned for souls very much because every soul is either going to go to heaven or go to hell. And once it's in heaven or once it's in hell, it's not going anywhere else. So if you go to hell and change your mind, tough stuff. You can't do anything about it then. Once you're there, you're there for all eternity. Fire and brimstone, never ending. People screaming, cursing, wishing they had listened to bald-headed people like me. But it's too late to do anything then. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved today. God bless you, my friends.